The next endocrine gland that we're going to focus on in detail is our thyroid gland or simply our thyroid. So let's begin by discussing the location of the thyroid gland in our body. So if we examine the front portion of our neck and if we peel off our skin, we're basically going to see our thyroid gland. So if we examine and begin with, the th uh, with our Adam's apple, so it's this region here, right above the Adam's apple is something known as the thyroid cartilage. So we have the Adam's apple, we have the thyroid cartilage, above that we have our larynx, and then we have a bone known as the hyoid bone. Now below the Adam's apple, so this section here, this is our thyroid gland or simply our thyroid which basically is this orange structure here. Now below that is the trachea and on both sides of our windpipe. So this entire region is called the windpipe because it, it, it actually carries our air into and out of our body. On both sides of the windpipe we have our blood vessels. We have the veins known as our internal jugular veins and we also have our arteries known Known as our common carotid artery. We have the right one and we have the left one. So essentially what the thyroid gland is, it's an endocrine gland that produces hormones that is located on the front portion of the windpipe and it also extends slightly towards the back. Now there are two types of cells that we're going to discuss in just a moment that are responsible for producing three types of hormones. We have T3, also known as the triiodothyrine hormone. We have the T4, also known as the thyroxine hormone. And we have our calcitonin. Now, T3 and T4 hormones of the thyroid gland are actually controlled and stimulated by a hormone that is produced by our anterior pituitary gland known as the thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. And TSH itself is stimulated and controlled by TRH, the thyroid releasing hormone produced by the hypothalamus. So we have this positive feedback mechanism that allows us to be basically control the production and release of T3 and T4. And we also actually have a negative feedback mechanism as we'll see in just a moment. So let's begin by discussing the triiodothyrine hormone, the T3, and the thyroxine hormone, the T4 hormone. Now, inside our thyroid gland, we have a type of cell known as our follicular cell. And this follicular cell is responsible for synthesizing and releasing T3 and T4 hormones. Now, both T3 and T4 are produced using our tyrosine amino acid. T3 simply means we have three iodide ions, three iodide atoms, and T4 means we have four iodide atoms attached onto that particular hormone. Now, T3 and T4 are both uh, uh, lipid soluble. So that means they do not dissolve in water, so they do not dissolve in our blood, and they require protein carriers to basically carry them within our bloodstream. Now, this also means that T3 and T4, because they are lipid soluble, they can easily dissolve across our cell membrane. And that means they basically enter the nucleus of our cell, the target cell, and they influence our cell on a transcriptional level. So they basically affect the different processes in our body, especially protein synthesis. So it turns out that T3 and T4 hormones affect the different types of cells in our body in very similar ways. They essentially affect the basal metabolic rate, also known as the resting metabolic rate. So this concept basically incorporates all the different processes and reactions that take place in our body, in our cells. For example, it affects cellular respiration, it affects protein synthesis, and so forth. So we see that an increased concentration of T3 and T4 hormones in our blood actually increases the rate of cellular respiration, increases the rate at which we produce our ATP by using oxygen. It also increases the rate of protein synthesis and protein degradation, and it also increases the 
the rate at which our heart actually contracts. So it influences this basal metabolic rate. Now, these hormones are actually also very important in the growth and the development of our organism from the child into an adult. Now, we have two important abnormalities that we should be familiar with when we're discussing T3 and T4. We have something called hypothyroidism and we have hyperthyroidism. So hypo simply means we have an insufficiency of. So that means our thyroid gland isn't able to actually produce a sufficient quantity of T3, T4 for one reason or another. And this basically means that the cellular respiration rate will be, uh, will be low, so we're not going to have enough energy, we're going to feel very lazy, we're not going to be, uh, we're not going to be that enthusiastic. So low, uh, low levels of these hormones will basically also lead to a, a, a gain of weight. So we're going to begin to gain weight. We're going to basically decrease the respiration rate. We're going to decrease our heart rate, among many other things. Now, hyperthyroidism is the opposite. We basically have an excess of T3, T4 hormones in our blood. So that means our thyroid gland is being overstimulated. And one reason why this takes place is a result of some type of tumor on our thyroid gland. So if we have too many of these T3, T4 molecules, we're going to feel very anxious and that's because our body's metabolic rate will increase. We're going to basically increase the rate at which we produce our energy. That will basically cause us to lose weight. It will increase our respiration rate. It will increase the rate at which our heart contracts and so forth. Now earlier we discussed a positive, uh, a positive feedback loop. So we said that what actually causes the release of T3 and T4 into the blood is the release of TSH by our interior pituitary gland. And what causes this pituitary gland to release TSH is the hypothalamus releasing our TRH. So we have a positive feedback loop going this way, a positive feedback loop going this way. But when we begin to increase the concentration of T3 and T4, that will basically inhibit the release of TRH by the hypothalamus and the release of TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone, by the anterior pituitary gland. So we have a negative feedback mechanism that basically helps us control the levels of T3 and T4 in our body. So basically, if we have a very low level of T3 and T4, that will basically cause the hypothalamus to release TRH, which will cause the anterior pituitary gland to release TSH, which will go on and cause the thyroid to release these two hormones. But over time, as the concentration in the blood plasma of T3 and T4 increases, that will basically affect these two structures via a negative feedback loop. It will cause, it will inhibit them from releasing these hormones and so the T3, T4 levels over time will basically stabilize. Now let's move on to the final type of hormone released by the thyroid gland known as calcitonin. Now we know that the follicular cells release and produce T3 and T4. But the parafollicular cells, also known as the C cells, are the cells that release and produce calcitonin inside our thyroid gland. Now, unlike these two hormones, calcitonin is a peptide hormone. It's a large peptide, and that basically means it's water-soluble. It can easily dissolve and travel inside our blood, and it binds onto receptor proteins on the plasma membrane of the target cell. Now, in the case of T3 and T4, their release is controlled by the hypothalamus and by the anterior pituitary gland, but the calcitonin is controlled by the levels of calcium inside our blood. So, if the levels of calcium in the blood is very high, 
calcitonin will be released by our thyroid gland into the blood. And what the calcitonin will basically do is it will try to decrease the level of calcium in the blood by three methods. The, th uh, the first method is basically it will increase the rate at which the bone absorbs calcium. It will decrease the rate of activity of osteoclasts which are the which are the cells in the bone that basically resorb our uh, resorb the bone and release calcium into our blood so it will decrease their activity but it will increase the activity of osteoblasts which are those cells in the bone that build the matrix of the bone and absorb the calcium from our blood so by increasing the activity of osteoblasts and decreasing the activity of osteoclasts inside the bone the bone basically absorbs the calcium from our blood thereby decreasing the calcium concentration in our blood. Now the second method by which our calcitonin basically decreases the calcium concentration inside our blood is by increasing the rate at which our kidneys actually excrete this calcium into our outside environment. So it will cause more calcium to be excreted by the kidneys. It basically inhibits the activity of certain cells in our kidneys that absorb that calcium. And finally, Finally, it causes our intestines to basically absorb less calcium and that means the calcium will eventually be excreted into the outside environment. So this is our thyroid gland. It's a type of endocrine gland that releases and produces three important types of hormones. We have T3 and T4 which are responsible for controlling the basal metabolic rate. It can increase or decrease that rate. And our calcitonin is basically responsible for controlling the calcium concentration inside our blood.